All right, so we just found out that the big thing of Facebook nowadays, <clears throat> unfortunately, is that we have to invest, literally, in Facebook. Because to reach an audience, the free route, is going to be very difficult. And cynically, I have to say, Facebook is making it harder for the free route to work. Because they see that it's valuable for companies to spend on marketing. So why would they stop? They are, they are, after all, a publicly traded company, meaning they're, they're on the stock market. You can buy Facebook stock. And when your company is publicly traded, you answer to your investors, not to your users, yeah. to your investors. So what we want to do here, and uh, I think it's maybe this month or very soon, Facebook is about to release their latest investor news, and we'll see how they're doing. And they're probably going to do very well. They've been doing well for years. So they're going to stay the course or accelerate. So what that means for us is, I have one like at the moment. No one's going to see my content. So I have a few ways to handle this. One, I'll show you the most direct way here, and then I'll show you the more advanced way. Both can work very, very well. But both of these ways are going to rely on paying for more position, for more, for more views. And you do have to realize that just because you paid $100 to reach more people does not mean you're going to sell more product. There is a limit to this. This can be showed to a thousand more people than you could have without paying, yes. But it's still very hard for people to put down that mouse and take out that credit card. Right? So they can take you as far, Facebook can take people as far as that link and that buy now page, but they still have, you still have to somehow close that deal on your website with the buy now or your enticements or whatever. But Facebook can you know, you lead a horse to water but make a drink. Facebook can give you a lot of horses, but you're still going to need to have them drink. And so this is one of the ways to lead. You've got boost post. You can do this in two ways. If I'm writing a, if I'm creating a post at that moment, I have the ability to boost post. I wouldn't do it that way, however, because the problem with this is that it's going to open up a brand new screen here that I have to fill out and work with. And if I make any mistake and whoops, I click, I canceled it. I have to do it all over. I could accidentally lose what I was writing here and what I was trying to boost. So my recommendation is to write your post as you normally would. Once you've published it and it's there out in the world, then I would boost it. Because I've had more trouble trying to publish it and boost it at the same time. I would rather publish it than boost it. And this is going to require, which I'll show you on another screen, you're going to need to put in a debit or credit card or PayPal account. I would obviously suggest to put in a credit card here because of the built-in fraud protection of a credit card. Not that I've ever had any fraud happen here, but credit cards give you more protection than a debit card. And I will mention that it can be very easy to accidentally put too much of a budget. You put an extra zero there, and you can fix that better than actual debit card, which is real money being transferred, whereas credit cards are, you know, fake money that you're still responsible for. But here I'm going to say I'm going to boost my post that I want to reach more people about my exclusive coupon. Um, Facebook does have some kind of some limits about what you can boost and 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 advertise. Uh, for example, we can attach a picture, but if the picture has too much text, if the picture has more than 20% text, it won't accept the ad. And there is a little checker that you can use to decide: Does my picture have too much text? It's going to put a grid on your picture, fill in bubbles. It's 21%. It won't allow it. You have to have less than 20% text on your picture. Again, that's another reason why you're going to f look at your um, competition about what they're posting. But anyway, let's say I've got this post. I'm going to click Boost Post. What will happen is this will be inserted into people's news feeds. How will it look on the desktop or the mobile? You've seen this, how you're on Facebook, and you see little ads 
about things which you may or may not like. If you do like them, that means someone is choosing the right demographic to target you. If you don't like them, it means that they didn't. But these are going to be ads that we're sending off to people. And uh, uh, here is how to reach an audience. This is very similar to when we set up our target audience earlier, but this is going to be more effective because it's going to reach more people. And in my case, I have various audiences that I've already set up. I'm not exactly sure how it looks on yours, but um, mine has location, interest, and age, edit audience, create new audience. So basically here, if I'm constantly boosting my post to certain people, I can save that audience so I can easily bring it back when I need it. So here are some examples. I have the follow audience, the blogger audience, healthy living audience, audience from PMD. So the healthy living audience, I've set that up, that it's going to be for these locations and interests. The blogger audience is going to be these locations and those interests and ages. Let's say I'm going to create a new one. It's going to pull this up very similar to what I saw when creating my audience previously. Now, I wish that it would make give me a blank slate, because when I teach this, I always need to reset this. But when you do this many times, it is useful that it remembers. But for me, I have a blank slate here. What would I name this audience? So I have Victor's Bakery, and let's say I'm going to be advertising my most expensive cake that I sell. So I can create an audience and call them whatever, you know, well-to-do clients. I can call them whatever I want, rich, middle, whatever. I can call this client whatever I'd like and then create a demographic so I can target to them. So I'm going to say this is the well-to-do clients located in a country, state, or city. Uh, you can put multiple countries, of course. But again, is this product that I'm selling, would it, would it help me if I target it? Because you can make as many of these boosts and, and, as we'll see later, ads as we want. We can make an ad targeting this same product to different audiences in a different way, if it makes sense. I'm going to keep it very simple for the moment and say that this one product, I want to target it to the people of California. Anyone in California would, look, would love my product. Uh, let's say California and Oregon. Sure. Well, why don't I put the whole U.S.? Sure. If I think that I'm going to reach the people that I'm trying to reach. The more people you're trying to reach, the more your message will get diluted and your money won't be as effective. If you keep it targeted, your money will be more effective. Age. Nope, I don't need 13-year-olds to buy this. I need serious people. 35 to 45. And again, I can make more than one of these and target it to more than one person, but I'll just say this age group, men and women. 4 to 10 interests. Again, this is the huge list of everything that everyone likes on Facebook. So I just start typing, so this is going to be people that are interested in cooking. So what do I have? Cooking, smoking, cooking plantain, cooking oil, cooking channel. Yeah, people that like the cooking channel. That's going to suggest, do you also want to target people that are into the DIY network? Jada de la Rentes, Food Network? Yeah, I would take the suggestions that it gives me if they make sense. And it said four to ten of them. So yeah, people that also like Food Network, Travel Channel, and let's say I'm going to add some other ones. They like Cooking Channel, Food Network, but they also like uh, Cakes. What comes under Cakes? Ace of Cakes, Jaffa Cakes, Birthday Cakes, Chocolate Cakes. Yeah, this is going to be my expensive truffle chocolate cake. So I also like chocolate cake. And it might give me some other suggestions. I would go for them, four to ten of them. This is good enough for the moment, and I can edit it again later. You do want to create target audiences, because then Facebook can make your money work for you the best. I'll save that. So my current audience for this current boost is going to be targeted to the well-to-do audience, which are these. I can go back and edit. Any questions on that create audience screen? So when you create an audience, 
the advance and it's just there somewhere and then boost later, or do you have to create it as you boost one and then it's saved? I think you can from another screen, but notice here, let's say I created this audience to say, I'll do it later. If I cancel, this will still be available later. Okay. Well, to do clients. Okay. So I can simply click boost, create the audience, and not go for it, and then use the audience later. Okay. And I believe we can also create the audience on another screen that we'll get to. <clears throat> so let's say I have my audience selected, well to do clients, budget. In my case it's suggesting if I spend twenty dollars I could reach between around twenty eight hundred to seventy four hundred people based on that audience and budget. That sounds cool. I have one like at the moment. I could reach at the minimum nearly three thousand with twenty dollars. I have here that I can select $60. Notice how many more I'll reach. $1,500. I can reach so many more people. And you might say, well, I thought he said I can choose $1. Yeah, choose your own, but $1. Even with $1, you're going to reach about 620 people. So 1,600 people. Mm. So I've got a dollar that mm. I can donate to myself to get to reach people, I get $12. Even with $12, that's up to $2,500. $10, So if you set aside a budget of once a month spending $20 consistently, you're going to be reaching more people. Even $5 a month because there will be an echo of this in that I spend some amount of money for some amount of time and even after my ad is over and it and the budget is over it's still gonna continue to reach some people not as high as if I'm actively paying for it but it will still reach some people even after the budget is over let's say I'm going with ten dollars the higher I increase my budget, I could reach up to 230000 but that's going to get more expensive. Let's say $10. How long shall I run this ad? How long will I try to target people? I've got one day, seven day, 14 days, or until what I say. So in one day, it'll spend $10 to reach as most people as possible. This will get placed in front of people that I've targeted over here the 35 to 45 year olds in the US California that like these things it's not gonna be wasted on people that are not liking these things it's gonna be targeting the people that are most likely to click a like or a follow or a reply or if I created my ad here with a link to go buy the product some of the people that see that will click to buy That'll take them back to your website, and then, then there they have to complete the final goal of actually putting in their credit card. So Facebook will direct people. It's very effective in doing that. But that final step of buying or donating or reading my articles or whatever, that's still going to fall on you to convince. It's like if you think about it with movies. You see these movies that you see a commercial for it every week, and you hear it on the radio. Just because you hear about a movie constantly doesn't mean it's a good movie. doesn't mean it's actually going to work and be profitable. That's always the downside of any marketing. Uh, sometimes, no matter how much money you throw at it, it won't pay off for various reasons. Let's say here I only wanted to do one dollar to kind of get a little traction, and I want this to run for seven days. It's going to complain. At least one dollar needs to be spent per day. If I put here seven dollars, it'll spend about one dollar over the course of seven days to try to reach around 2,200 to 5,800 people.
I already have a payment method set up, so I'm ready to go. I can click boost and it'll start. I won't do that yet, and even if you're at this point, I wouldn't do this just yet. We want to understand this and then we'll fully work with it. But this is the big idea here that we're boosting a post. A post that exists, I want more people to see it. So I go through boost, set an audience and a budget, tell it to go. And then it'll, it'll go. It'll start to show this to those people. Yes? In the insights, it'll give me. Remember, I said I'll I'll have a brand new tab of insights here. It will tell me in detail um, how I how well I've reached people and all of that good stuff. So yeah, it gives me a lot of feedback. So within this screen, I've also got this little gear to record a problem, contact support, and guess what? They will be much more amenable to help you out once you start paying for stuff. So regular old people that are using Facebook, I'm having trouble with my Facebook, nice, submit a request. But here, because we're actually paying them, and they're like, yes, how can we help you? Here's our phone number. So um, there is a contact here for help there. And then there's also terms and conditions and a help center. So this screen is not completely complicated. The complication is who is your target audience? And it's a good idea to start perhaps wide. You know, maybe I will target it to everyone in the US with a few topics in, a, in the full, full age range. And that's very useful because if I cast a wide net, when I check the results, it will help me narrow it for next time. I had a client that we were marketing her jewelry, and we put it pretty wide out there. And when we checked the demographics, we saw that we had a lot of interest coming from Texas. So guess what? The next time we post something, we're going to target Texas. Because we saw some results coming from Texas. Let's hit Texas even more. Facebook is telling us that's a good audience. But we wouldn't know that until we cast a wide net. So maybe in the beginning, don't be so specific. Maybe be a little wider, and then get specific when you can. So do you think Facebook is looking at everything, say, on your page info or your about page when they compile this audience they're going to send this boosted post to? I don't believe so because you, we are telling Facebook right here the audience. Okay. It's not that it's checking our bio and such. We're telling it. I want Californians that love the cooking channel. And I never wrote anything about cooking channel on my bio. You might also get something somewhere that mentions a <clears throat> conversion pixel. Uh, this one doesn't show it, but some of you might see it, and I'll mention that the conversion pixel, which we'll look at on another screen, is a little bit of code that Facebook will give you to add to your website, where it can further track the efficacy of your ads. Because at this point right here, Facebook will be able to give me a lot of data, but only of what's happening in Facebook. As soon as a person clicks your button that goes to your website, Facebook can't track what's happening on your website. Oh, here it is. So I do have, on this example, I have a link to my website. And I have this extra pixel option. This is a little bit of setup required, which I'll show you in a moment, where I can then connect this particular piece of code from my Facebook account and my website. Then when I set that up, Facebook will be able to tell me what happened on my website. Facebook will be able to tell me that a person came to the shop page, added a product, went to checkout, and then they canceled. I had abandonment. Facebook will be able to tell me they came to my shop, added two products, went to checkout, and bought. So it was a full success. I have to set up a pixel to do that because Facebook's power stops as soon as they leave my website. And as, long as, as soon as they leave Facebook for my website. Unless I add a pixel. Would anything be added to the site? 
What's that? Yes, it's going to be a little bit of code, a, a little bit of JavaScript, I believe. We add it to the head of our document, and it'll it'll track it. So we'll get to that in one moment. But it is very effective. This is how we see the full the full cycle: what started on Facebook and what ended on my site. We'll see that in just a moment. You won't get this unless you have some sort of link from your post in Facebook over to your website. Makes sense. Let me cancel this, but any questions then on this boosting? This is going to be one of the things that you're going to be engaging in on Facebook. And we have this on Twitter too. We can do boosted tweets on Facebook. Um, we can do this uh, to some degree as well uh, on Pinterest. We can do this on Instagram. All of these social networks are giving us some way to reach more of an audience if we pay a little bit here and there. Google Plus at the moment does not have that way, but Google is t Google Plus is tied into the huge AdWords thing, where you can pay and reach a big audience that way. So this is the way of the world for us as businesses because we're one of many thousand Victor's Bakeries, we're one of many thousand realtors, thousand fencing companies, public speakers, etc. And paying for it does help you reach more of an audience. I'm going to cancel this. This will boost a particular post, but you might also be seeing promote website, promote here, promote your CTA. We can pay to promote, to boost this stuff in a variety of ways. If I added my website, I want my website to be visible to more people. No problem. Facebook gives us a way to pay for that. And all of that is tied together into their powerful and complicated Manage Ads screen. So let's look at this. Click on your triangle at the top right corner. Manage Ads. Go ahead, create page, manage page, groups, don't worry about that. Ads, create an ad, manage ads. Let's go to manage ads first. That only happens if you've already placed them Because I don't have a... I Maybe... But do you have the ability to boost? Yeah. Okay. Um, I might have to check... Advertising on Facebook. Hmm. Uh, try to click on that. Advertising on Facebook. Maybe you need to click that first in order to see this. So mine is then saying leave the page. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to leave this page. So what happened after you click advertise on Facebook? Is there any button then that says okay, opt in or okay or thank you or something? Just to create an Okay, well, I suppose as a beginner, then it has to, you do have to create an ad first. So, uh, okay, we'll look at this page first then. So, this is the same as if I had clicked on create ad. I wanted to go to manage ad, but I guess you do need to have an ad existing first in order to do that. But notice here what I've got is these are my objectives. So what do I want to do here? And this is very cool because you can do a variety of things. Boost the post, promote my whole page to get likes, send people to my website, all of these things. Get people to claim your offer. You roll over these, they give you a little explanation. Use the offer claims objective to promote your offer. Obvious. So let's say I click on get people to claim my offer, then it's going to go through the process. Well, which of these companies are you trying to do this with? You might only have one, so that's easy, but I've got plenty. Um, okay. Promote page.
So any of these, um, let's see if we can use any of these just to see what it looks like. Promote to your page. It's going to say which of these pages. I have a lot, but you probably only have one. What would you like to call this campaign? You can call it anything you want. You can reuse campaigns. Um, so I'm just going to call it Victor's Page Likes. That's fine. Set audience and budget. Basically, it's going to jump me through these big things. What objective do I have? Who's my audience and budget? And then how I'm actually setting up the ad. So set audience and budget takes me here. This is where I can set what I was showing similar a moment ago, what's the name of my audience, the location. Here we have the option for language. And over here, we've got uh, this range. Is my targeting too specific or is it too broad? At the moment, I haven't really done anything, but it's kind of broad. <coughs> I want to get it closer to specific, but not so specific. My audience is limited. So potential reach 132 million people. As I refine this, it's going to focus. Way too specific. But I would be filling this in. Detailed targeting, connections. So he had very specific here. This this for this concept can be uh, very powerful. This uh, Facebook marketing um, screen is a. Uh, very useful in, in my experience for a variety of clients. It can be very overwhelming just because obviously I can't teach exactly what to do here for everyone because everyone's going to need to pick these specific things for themselves. They're relatively self-explanatory. In my budget, one of the things you do want to do, be, be very careful of, I set a budget, daily budget, and then if I don't do anything else, I'm going to get a shock on my credit card bill. This happened to someone very recently. This this lady reached out to my company and wanted some training in Facebook and said, I got a I got a bill of $180 from Facebook and I thought I was only spending 20. Well what happens is this. I'm it's we're, we're telling Facebook we can spend $25 per day with no limit. Starting today. I can see myself getting more noticing that. Yeah. 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 This place and another place is a way to set that, but yeah, they, they, they used to not have this as a default. Now this is the default, so you have to be very careful here. I only plan to spend $25 in total, so make sure you set a start and end date to this $25. We have daily budget, lifetime budget. In theory, that's supposed to protect you more that you have right here in total. I only want to spend 25. So that's supposed to stop it. The lifetime budget. But notice the default is daily budget. I'm going to spend $25 every day until I realize I've spent $500. Mm -hmm. So you want to set a start and end date. And, Nepal, and it says right here, you'll spend up to $625 because it also suggested for me to do this a month. Be careful about these numbers. I'm going to say on a daily budget, I'm going to spend $1 for one month. Here's $25. And that's going to reach about 1,400 to 3,600 people on Facebook out of 100 million. That's fine. $1 a day, I can spare $25. Little by little, this, little by little, the type of ad that I chose was a Facebook likes. I could have chosen a bunch of other kinds of ads here. But be very careful about your budget here. Uh, 
optimize my ad, I'm doing page likes, will deliver your ad to the right people to help you get more page likes at the lowest cost automatically. I need to educate myself more because this is relatively new, this particular thing. I don't know the big difference between automatic and manual. I, have an, I don't have a big answer to tell you here. I would keep it automatic. I have to educate myself also. This stuff changes all the time. Uh, so this other stuff, <coughs> probably can keep it okay. Ad scheduling, run ads all the time. You can target that to times, but again, I wouldn't do that if I don't know what time people are active. If you do this in a broad sense, when you get the data back, then you can be even more specific. So these I would set as defaults. The big things, obviously, set your budget appropriately, set your target audience. Some of these other ones, I would leave the defaults until I have data to, to back it up. And then add the actual ad. Do I want to do some sort of video or text? What sort of, I mean, a video or photo, what sort of text to attach? What will it look like on the news feeds and such? And basically, well, maybe I don't want to target it to these areas. I've got desktop news feed, that's the main column. I've got desktop on the right column. And so, then I'm ready to place the order. Because I've got a credit card set up. If you don't have one set up, it'll ask you to set up a credit card. And then and we'll close without saving. Review order. You have these help buttons. So we've if we step back, we've talked about Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook, three social networks. You can go the completely free route and do pretty well on Google Plus and Twitter. I like those two because you can get very good results free. I like Facebook if I have a budget for it. And the budget can be very affordable. Um, but the more you spend, the more you reach. I'm going to back out out of all of this just to show you that once you've got once you've got a page that has likes and activity and such the 25 likes <clears throat> you'll have a, a brand new tab of insights this is where we will pull up all of that detail about uh, in this time period of one week compared to the previous week we have this many more likes and views and how many more people saw it and all of that and we did put in some boosted posts this week that's why obviously it's much larger so you can see the numbers without a, without doing a boost last week. With doing a boost last week, one thousand percent increase. We did not spend like a thousand dollars. It was like a it was like a thirty dollar boost. It shows right here also on these two days here. Uh, this is our reach. How many people saw it? This one, 93 people. This one, 980. This one's really new, so not, no one's really seen it yet. These, 25,000 people saw it. 21,000 people saw it. Well, great. Seeing it is one thing, but what did they do about it? Here's engagement. Post clicks or likes? The blue one. The blue one might be the more important one because there were actually links in the post, such as, Happiness is homemade tortilla. Click here to buy it. You know, we, it's great that they liked in the, the photo and they commented, and that's nice, but we want them to buy it, the soup. So it had 1,000 comments or likes or whatever, but what we really want is to sell soup. So there's 812 clicks of that link to the soup. Wow. Does that mean we sold 812 
cups of soup? Even 10% of that. Even 10% of that, 1% of that is, you know, some good amount of sales of soups. And we can back that up with the owner. We can ask the owner, let's let's check your your cash your cash register, your receipts, and we can pull up the report saying that there was a spike in soup sales because it comes from that. There, this one was not boosted, but it is getting this relatively high reach for free. So there is that residual there is that residual uh, result. Um, so all of this data that you'll see likes. So within the last three months, notice these spikes in likes. Those are oftentimes when you boost, when you pay. This page has 5,600 likes. These are not this is not the same as when I said earlier, don't buy likes. That's literally don't buy likes. This is buying ads. This is ads that are reaching real people that are actually going to like or better yet buy your product. If you paid $5 to get 5,000 likes, that's 5,000 spam bots that are not going to buy anything. Yes? And now that you have 5,600 likes, every time you post something, all those people will see what you posted? Still not. Still not. The algorithm is still that some percentage, and we don't know how much because it's a trade secret. Even though we got 5,600, even if we say 1% of that, you know, that's 56 people, I think. So it's still very low. Could be. I don't know. I'm saying 1%. It could be 20%. It could be 70%. I don't know. But boosting it is going to be guaranteeing. You know how it said between 2,000 and 7,000. So starting at 2,000. With this day-to-day -day work, that you do not go out automatically to all those people. No. Okay. But it's still reaching some of them, mm -hmm. and that's still because right. I don't I don't have my budget for every week to pay twenty dollars. Right. So I'm still going to be reaching some amount little by little. Mm -hmm. This other kind of chart here, likes and unlikes. So there's going to be some unlikes here and there. And then paid likes, organic likes. So you're going to see that 12 organic likes, and then 22, no, uh, 12 paid likes. So over here, when there was no payments, there were six likes, one like, etc. And yeah, you pay, and you get more results. And it may be cynical, but that's advertising. That's marketing. It's it's the game when your page was liked. So all of this great data, you can further go on to reach and page views and check everything in total. Notice the dark orange is when you pay for something, you're going to reach 4,000 people. When you don't, it's 1,900 people. And notice how huge of a result that is, 13,000. Right there with no payment, 400 people. 400 people is nothing to sneeze at, but obviously the more you pay and the more you reach. If yes. you were just starting out, would you suggest um, investing in page likes prior to boosting posts? I'm feeling and what I'm seeing is that these likes are really not as useful as they used to be. Uh, you do get some result of them, but you still need to build lots and lots of likes because the algorithm is going to skew your ads away from even those, those that want to see your stuff by clicking a like. So I wouldn't spend too much time and effort and budget on likes. I would still do the individual boostings and such, because that's going to reach out past your likes and attract more, more likes or more activity. Um, yes? Did you get the actual return, like percentage, based on how much the investment of this is? I know the soup sales went up, but it's not just a soup like people will go there. Obviously, the entire ticket sales for that yeah. we should be way higher. The, the funny thing, the funny thing is that with food, this is a client of food. The funny thing is that it's it's pretty specific that if we promote something of a particular dish, it suddenly does start to sell, and noticeably than the rest. So there were more sales on a particular day, but it does focus on the particular thing advertised because people see that thing and they want to eat that thing. Mm -hmm. It depends on the the company and other things 
other variables about how it works for you, but uh, yeah, we can corroborate what it was in total, but mostly we see it on a specific dish. On this post, it shows here, um, let's see, the highest number, 51, 51.9. It seems that Monday, Monday is the most popular day for us to post something. 5,192. And then least popular Tuesdays. One day later, then people less, and then a little higher there, and so forth. So again, what's the best day to post on Facebook? I don't know. You check your demographics, your insights, and you'll get an answer. They put it in a payday that might be Yeah. Yeah, because this is this is saying for the most recent one week period. And then here's your time. Well, what's the best time to post on Facebook? Not at 3 a.m. Maybe at 8 p.m. Even if it's like a little whale, doesn't it? So for some of you, it's going to be up and down, or maybe steady, especially if you're international. But here, it only reached 494 insomniacs. And then over here, it reached 2,800 at 8 p.m. Well, throughout all of this time, look, basically 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And that's a, yes, it's a huge time period, 12 hours. But uh, then the most effective are going to be, you know, 6 to 8 p.m. This is the 2,800 range. And then it drops down quickly because there's midnight, and then 3 a.m. seems to be the worst time. Although you still reach some people at that time. And again, the individual posts recently, and you'll see that the ones that were paid for reach more people. In that case, right, they're 10 times more people. Usually, these budgets are 20 to $50. This kind of company can afford that because they're also spending that money on radio ads and TV ads and all of that. It's all advertising. And you can definitely have your range between, you know, $1 and $10 a month or $20 a month or whatever. You can look here, the people. We're seeing very close 50-50 men and women. But if your product is specifically pointed toward women, and you're still getting 50-50, that means you have to fix something, perhaps. Age ranges, 35 to 44. So that means we can target this audience and get better results, perhaps. Or we'll try a little bit more effort to get more people from there. And countries. The, the majority of people within this last time period Nearly 5,000 was the U.S., then Mexico, and then a big drop-off everywhere else, Spain, Italy, etc. And so I'm seeing here that people in San Diego, it's, we've reached people in San Diego, 300 people more than L.A. They've got a restaurant in L.A. and San Diego, which is Chula Vista and Tijuana. So if you combine that, that's still more people locally Southern California than L.A., which is still Southern California, but... Now I know that. Some people from Mexico City are seeing it. It's English and Spanish. Spanish from Spain. It drops down pretty quickly. So you get a lot of this data, and you can even look at this individually per boosted post. Uh, if I look on a particular post somewhere, there we go. So if I'm looking at if I'm looking at all my posts and then show me the data of this one post, then it'll break it down to this one post. This post itself got 897 likes, it was shared 78 times, 52 comments, 812 clicked on that link which went over to the main website, only one hid the post. You know, you see that and you're tired of it, you hide post. Only one did it. Um, so yeah, I, I believe I remember, I remember shooting that photo. The cool thing about working at a restaurant, when you take their photos, usually you can eat the food later because you have to style it and touch it and everything. They don't want to sell that. So I've gotten so many free tacos from them. The last thing that I'll talk about, then we have to wrap it up, is 
when you get manage ads, you'll get this other sort of control panel view where then you can see all your ads at a glance and rerun ads, you know, re rerun the ads and all of that. So after you've gotten at least one ad, you'll see this screen where you can then set up other options and see how much it worked and see these budgets and effectiveness. As you can see, the reach $25 reached 10,000 people. Uh, I showed earlier that be careful about setting your, your starting and ending day budgets because you could run up a big bill. Here is another screen. You might not be able to see this, so make a note when you get this screen and it's not obvious. You also have another place here to protect yourself against accidentally going over budget. This is inside of the Manage Ads screen. You're going to see here, Total Spent of Limit. You can set a limit here too. There is no limit before you set this. So that's how you can reach $180 without paying attention. There is going to be a button for you to set a limit to not go over. Where you set up your bank accounts and all of that, change this limit, and then that way you won't go past a certain goal. So this is another big, complicated, useful screen, but there's always these help buttons and such. And this is where we spend a lot of our time with clients on Facebook because this is how you reach an audience. It's not the same as before that simply getting a like was going to reach an audience. Now you have to spend some. It can be very affordable or as expensive as you want. If you are going to go the full, the full Monty and set up the pixel, here it is here. It's kind of hidden. In this Manage Ads screen, under Tools, you'll see Pixels. You want to set that up so that then Facebook can give you all the data. What happened from Facebook to your website to the final checkout button. It's a little technical, but it's in there and there's help files. It'll basically give you a little piece of code to copy from Facebook onto your site and then it's and then it works basically. But that's hidden under the tools screen. What is your advertiser support to get in touch with someone? Because hey I'm a paying customer. charge the same amount of rate to all the businesses? For example, if I am General Electric versus the Baker Shop, is it the same amount? Yeah, they have that screen. Everyone has that screen where they... Where you, of views, for example. Everybody er pays the same rate? Well, yeah, but then the thing is it's up to you to set your budgets. General Electric is going to need to spend a hundred dollars a month to reach more people. For me, I might not need to, so there is no sort of price about how much... More qualified needs, one over the other, there is no higher value. It's just whatever you set for your budget. Meaning, I don't have to pay extra five dollars if you have more money targeted an audience over anybody. Well, unfortunately, I don't believe I have an answer for that. I think those are part of the algorithm and the trade secret. I would, from what I understand, I don't believe Facebook gives preferential treatment in that way. I believe they give preferential treatment the more you spend, but they are trying to be, or they say that they are neutral. So as long as you're paying and you're targeting your audience, it should reach the right audience, and it's in their, it's in their interest to to do that right so that you continue to pay you know you they want you to see good results so that you're seeing this works so I'll keep paying if it doesn't work and then you no longer pay then they're losing out so it's in their interest to be as impartial as possible but obviously this is a 
big corporation and they're in it to make money for their shareholders and such and if they bend the rules in order to be more profitable they might do it I don't know so that's sort of the trade secret stuff that we have to trust and if you and if we don't trust them then we don't trust them but this is the modern way of doing it so let me mention a couple more things as we wrap up the class I would appreciate a couple of things if you would like here on Facebook now that we're here you can give a like to my company's page here PMD interactive or you can go over to instructor Victor Campos I have a page there as well you can go over to instructor Victor Campos give a like there Again, the purpose of that would be that you would see the latest. If I'm doing a new class and such, and I advertise it there, you might see it. Or I might boost that for more people to see it. So either my company page or my Instructor Victor page, you can give that a like. That would be nice. It's optional. And what you could also do is, if you do a Google search, this is outside of Facebook, if you, if you search rate my professor Victor Campos I have a profile at ratemyprofessors.com if you haven't heard of that that's a place where people can rate instructors and classes and colleges and the purpose of that is let's say you need to take a, a math class and there's five to choose from which one do you want to choose maybe the one with the maybe the one that isn't so mean when they grade <laughs> so you can go here and people can do ratings, and this this obviously existed before the web. I remember at UCSD back in the late '90s, early 2000s, they published a book in the bookstore where people wrote this on real paper. They had those reviews in a little book that you could buy. Now it's online. So anyway, I'm at rate my professors, but be careful because I'm I've got a profile at San Diego Continuing Education, which is this campus, and Southwestern College, which is not. So if you're going to give me a review here, which is anonymous. Please remember to select a new continuing education profile, not the one at Southwestern College. And if you do give an anonymous feedback there, it's useful for me because it helps me improve my classes. It also shows the bosses that these are good classes. But uh, if you do give some feedback there, it'll ask you for a class number, the number of our class. This class is. 6534J. The subject, of course, is uh, social media. So if you do that at some point, I would appreciate that. Either a like on Facebook or a review on the website. PMD Interactive. We've got PMD Interactive right there. And the very last thing I will mention, this is officially the end of the fall semester. When in February we start spring, a whole new slate of classes. The new spring schedule is out, but I recommend you look at the digital catalog because this goes out of date. I know it's out of date because they were, they've actually preemptively canceled two of my classes. Uh, they were accidentally paying me too much. So they canceled two of my classes. And um, so that's already a little out of date. So what I would do is I would go to sdce.edu, which is this college's website, San Diego Continuing Education .edu, sdce .edu. Take a class and there's the whole current up-to-date catalog in digital format where you can search by keywords or instructors as you know, this is paper. You can't quite search this, except with your own eyes. And so if we take a class here and search for my last name, C-A-M-P-O-S, it'll tell you the 24 classes I'll be teaching next semester. And if you set this by start date, it'll tell you what days and times my classes are coming up. So starting in February, oh, I get a little bit of time off. That's cool. Uh, starting on the 9th, <clears throat> on the 9th, which is a which is Tuesday, Thursday, I'm teaching an Android class, HTML, pretty advanced. And then I'm doing also 
So today's today's Tuesday, right? So if you come back on the ninth, this is not social media anymore. It's Android. Be careful. If you want to learn how to make a website, I've got WordPress Part One. That's Wednesdays, twelve thirty noon to four p.m. That's e-commerce with WordPress. You're going to learn basic WordPress in Part One, and then when you take Part Two, it'll then add e-commerce. So to be able to sell products on a website that you build in WordPress. And those one. are just during the day. There's nothing. Well, if we look on further days, this is e-commerce with WordPress Part One. That one's also during the day. Um, maybe the same I'm, thing as with the social media class is during the day. Also, part two is during the day. The second part of this class. Well, they've got so many of my classes here that you have to go through it to see what might work. But that's why I, I mentioned the, the the online catalog because then you can search by days and times. Okay. Nine a.m., six p.m., twelve thirty. They really the range there. So if I don't have it on one month, I probably have it the next month, just because I usually do one month long classes. But that's what's coming up for the next month. We've got Android, we've got WordPress, we've got SEO. That's what I might recommend you do next time, although that's Friday 9 a.m. So that app development, because that sits on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Yes. But then, um, how proficient do you have to be in HTML? Because this is a three-part class, part one, part two, part three, part one zero experience. I take people with zero experience and by the end of part three, which is three months, then they do have an app. It's not going to be the next Facebook or Instagram, but it will be an app about your business with a map and, e and email ability and feedback and database and all that. And in three months, I get people, I've been teaching this a few years, I get people with no experience, they come in and they have an app that I can show you right now live on Amazon nice. for sale. Um, I may take that one, but um Android. The concepts that I'm teaching in that class apply to iPhone too, but I just have to teach Android because you have to create an iPhone app on a Mac. And in this lab, we don't have Macs; we only have Windows. Oh, we only have Windows. Okay. So the concept that you learn here will be able to apply to all platforms. I just get to know. So yeah, I'll see you at that class. Then. Thank you. So at this point, everyone, thank you for taking the class. We're kind of out of lab time, but um, if you have any final questions, I'll help you out. Make sure you signed in. Maybe see you in a future class.